Ladies and gentlemen, so if you've been watching my channel over the last few weeks, uh, no doubt you've seen my response to Jay Toll and Media One, uh, who went up into the Californian aqueduct uh, a few weeks ago and did what he called an epic gravity experiment. Uh, and I responded basically telling him how shit his experiment was uh, and how to do it properly. Uh, I was actually in California last week, uh, so I hired one of these, uh, hired one of these, and hired one of these as well, uh, and took them all up into the uh, Palmdale, Lancaster region, just north of LA. Uh, so Jay Tolan's experiment was basically taking six separate stations, uh, about a mile and a little bit apart, and pointing his uh, telescope slash inclinometer contraption uh, across to Quartzite Mountain, which was about 54 miles away, uh, and measuring the elevation to that mountain. Uh, and there's a little screenshot as well. Uh, so his angles weren't actually absolute angles. He had no way of properly leveling his device. Uh, so basically his uh, measurements were all based around this first measurement, 0 0.195 degrees, uh, and got fairly consistent results around that. However, uh, if you actually have an instrument that can properly measure absolute angles, uh, such as a theodolite, you can do this experiment properly. Uh, so here's a table uh, showing that from an observer height of 900 meters, looking across the Quartzite Mountain, uh, so it's 86 kilometers away uh, and 1,380 meters high. Uh, these are the predicted angles uh, of elevation for both a flat earth and a globe. Uh, so on a flat earth, at that station number one, 54 miles or 86 kilometers away, uh, the peak of that mountain should appear 0 0.32 degrees above eye level uh, on a globe. Uh, it should appear very, very slightly below eye level. So putting that simple observation aside for a moment uh, and just humoring Jay Tolan, there is actually a problem uh, with what I tried to do on the first attempt. Uh, and that is that these angles don't change by very much. So the theodolite that I rented, uh, the fine tuning adjustment dial only ticks up or down by 20 arc seconds at a time. Uh, and 20 arc seconds is only 0 0.006 degrees. Uh, so as you can see from these numbers, uh, if I am off by 0 0.006 degrees, and that could just be a tiny adjustment of the fine tuning dial, uh, it could be a tiny error in the leveling of the instrument, uh, or it even could be a change in atmospheric conditions. That would invalidate the results. Um, so. Again, to make things uh, doubly conclusive, uh, I needed to come up with a different solution. Uh, and that solution was to go big or go home. Uh, so I planned out a different experiment, uh, but this time over a much longer distance where the uh, calculated and predicted angles would change by a much greater degree. Uh, so here are my five sites. Uh, spread out over about 15 miles or 24 kilometers. All right, and obviously I didn't have a telescope uh, and didn't have any infrared technology. Uh, so I didn't think that I would be able to see Quartzite Mountain anyway. Uh, so I chose a couple of different mountains. Uh, I chose Saddleback Butte uh, off to the northeast. Uh, and obviously given the name, there are two peaks there, Saddleback North and Saddleback South. Uh, I also chose uh, Cummings Mountain off to the northwest. Right, so here I am at my first site, uh, and what I first should explain is how I correctly identified the peaks. Uh, and that is basically a function of the theodolite. So what you're gonna see here uh, is me having set the horizontal angle uh, to be zero and pointing the theodolite at the control tower uh, for Palmdale Airport. Uh, so that was the reference point that I used for all the observations. All right, so if I'm at site number one uh, and on Google Earth, I draw a line between that point and the control tower here, uh, I know that the bearing or the heading to that location is 20.94 degrees. 
if I then draw a line to Saddleback South uh, and get another bearing, uh, it says 63 degrees. So I now know that the angle between those two lines uh, is 42.06 degrees. So what I do with my theodolite uh, is point it at the control tower, uh, reset the horizontal angle to be zero, uh, and then rotate it clockwise by 42.06 degrees, uh, and then boom, I should be pointing at Saddleback South. That is South Saddleback with Alpine Butte in the foreground. And numbers are 89460, 42420. That is. All right, just to explain those numbers that you saw on the screen there. Uh, so the bottom line is the horizontal angle, uh, and it was 42 degrees, 4 minutes, and 20 seconds uh, clockwise. So to convert that to uh, like decimal degrees, so it's 42 degrees, four minutes, so four over 60, uh, and then 20 arc seconds, uh, which is 20 over 3600. Uh, and you come up with an angle of 42.07 degrees. Uh, and if you remember back a few seconds, I calculated an angle uh, to settle back to be 42.06. Uh, so that must be it. Uh, the top line, however, is what I am most interested in, uh, and that is the vertical angle uh, to the peak of South Saddleback. Uh, so first of all, you have to understand that on this particular theodolite, uh, the angle is measured from zenith, uh, so straight up is zero degrees, uh, and horizontal or eye level is 90 degrees. Uh, so when it says a vertical angle of 89 degrees, it is slightly above eye level. Uh, so you basically go 90 degrees minus that to get an angle above uh, eye level. Uh, and in this case, we have a vertical angle of zero degrees and 14 uh, minutes above eye level. Uh, so zero plus 14 over 60 plus zero over 3600 uh, equals our measurement above eye level. Uh, and this one turned out to be 0 0.233 degrees. That is our measurement. All right, but what is the predicted angle uh, on a flat earth? Uh, so again, our observer elevation at site one, uh, the ground elevation was 900 and I added roughly a meter for the tripod. Uh, the elevation of Saddleback Butte South uh, is 1,102 meters. Uh, and the distance, according to Google Earth, to that peak is 32,224 meters. Uh, so it's fairly simple to make yourself a right angle triangle uh, to work out this uh, angle above eye level. Uh, again, so our distance or our uh, adjacent side uh, is 32,224 meters, and our opposite side is 201 meters. Uh, and a few flurfers could uh, learn a bit of trigonometry. Uh, you would know that that means we apply the tangent formula because we have the opposite and adjacent sides. Uh, so the tangent of this angle uh, is equal to 201 meters over 32,224 meters. Uh, so theta is equal to the arc tangent of that. Uh, and theta then works out to be 0 0.357 degrees. So on a flat earth, uh, our prediction is that the peak of Saddleback South should appear 0 0.357 degrees above eye level. All right, so what about the predicted angle on a globe? Uh, the math here is a little more complicated. Uh, I did do this in a previous video, but I think it's worth uh, going through it again just for the flurfers. All right, so we have, uh, what we're gonna do here actually is set up a a Cartesian plane, which is just an XY plane where uh, the X uh, distance is your left and right, uh, and the Y value is your up and down. Uh, so we have our a distance to Saddleback Butte South of 32.2 kilometers. Uh, we're going to assume standard refraction for the globe uh, because refraction is a fact. Uh, so we'll change our Earth radius from 6,371 kilometers. Uh, to roughly 7,433 kilometers. Uh, if you times that by two pi to get the circumference, uh, you'll get a new circumference of 46,702 kilometers. 
All right, so this diagram obviously represents the Earth. Uh, this vertical line here is our observer position, and he is some distance above sea level. Uh, and this line here is our uh, peak that we are looking at, again, uh, some distance above sea level. Uh, so we're going to try and assign uh, some X and Y coordinates to both points. Uh, obviously, this one's fairly easy. So the X coordinate is zero. We haven't moved left or right. Uh, the Y coordinate is the radius plus his elevation of 901 meters. So that's fine. Uh, but we want to know what the coordinates are for this point, And that's what we're going to work out. All right, so I've just changed that. Uh, to be 7,433.734 kilometers. So that is just the radius plus his elevation. Uh, but for now, we're gonna try and work out this angle. So the angle between these two lines. All right, we know that the arc length, so the distance between the observer and the mountain uh, is 32,224 kilometers. Uh, we also know that the circumference of the circle itself uh, is 46.7 million uh, kilometers. Uh, so that as a proportion of a uh, 360 degree circle uh, makes this angle alpha uh, equal to 0 0.24840 degrees. Right, so now we can actually make another right angle triangle uh, and try to work out the X and Y coordinates of this point. Uh, so we know also that this red line here uh, is equal to the radius, the uh, effective Earth radius of 7,433 kilometers plus the elevation of Saddleback Butte. Uh, and that makes it 7,433.9 kilometers roughly. Uh, so to work out the X component of that, uh, we have the, or we want to know the opposite side and we have the hypotenuse, so we use the sine function. Uh, so sine of alpha, which is that number there, uh, is equal to our opposite over the hypotenuse. Uh, so we work out the X component to be 32,229 meters. So that's half the job. The uh, other job is to work out the Y component, uh, which is this adjacent side uh, to our angle alpha. Uh, so cos of alpha uh, equals our adjacent over the uh, hypotenuse of 7,433 kilometers, uh, which works out our y component uh, to be this number here. Right, so we have our x and y component uh, for that point. We also have our x and y component for our observer location. So now we can make a second uh, right angle triangle to try and work out our viewing angle. So in this particular case, uh, we seem to be looking downwards, uh, but you'll notice that this Y component is actually larger than this Y component. Uh, so we need to flip our little triangle over uh, to make it correctly reflect the situation. All right, so the distance between our observer uh, and our peak in the X direction uh, is simply this number minus that number. Uh, so that's 32.229 kilometers. Uh, and obviously this uh, opposite side uh, is this number minus that number, which is uh, 131 meters. So we have our uh, opposite and adjacent sides to the triangle. So again, we use the tangent formula and that's fairly simple. So tan of theta uh, equals 131 meters over your distance of 32 kilometers. Uh, and theta works out to be 0 0.233 degrees. All right, so if you can remember back to the, the start of this little section, uh, first of all, we made a, uh, a flat earth prediction of 0 0.357 degrees. Uh, and we just worked out a globe prediction of 0 0.233 degrees. Now, who can remember what the actual measurement was? 0 0.233 degrees. So I'm gonna say that's score one for the globe. All right, but it wasn't just Saddleback South. Uh, I did Saddleback North uh, 
which you'll see here. So again, using the same mathematics, uh, the GLOW prediction was 0 0.248 degrees uh, and the flat earth prediction was 0 0.375 degrees. Uh, here is the, the screen of the theodolite uh, at the time of making the observation. Uh, so you can see that it is uh, 15 minutes above uh, horizontal or above eye level. Uh, and that works out to be 0 0.25 degrees against our GLOW prediction of 0 0.248. Uh, so obviously that's another winner as well. Uh, so the third mountain I looked at was called Cummings Mountain. Uh, off to the northwest. Uh, so the GLOW prediction 0 0.937 degrees, flat earth prediction 1.205 degrees. Uh, here is the actual measurement and it works out to be 0 0.928 degrees. So very very close to our GLOW prediction and a very very long way from our flat earth prediction. Alright so then I went to site number two uh, and hit a bit of a snag. Uh, the road leading up to site number two has actually been closed for a little while. Uh, so I went to site number three, uh, and here is a gratuitous car shot. Uh, this is actually the site, or very close to the site, where Jay Tolan did his uh, experiment. Uh, his experiment was across the road in the other car park and in the other direction. All right, so there is the theodolite set up at uh, site number three. You can actually see this and this on the satellite uh, on Google Earth, which is uh, interesting. Anyway, so I won't go through the boring maths. I'll uh, basically just show you the predictions on both uh, models and the measurements that I actually made. And obviously the measurements are much, much, much closer uh, to the globe model prediction than they are to the flat Earth prediction uh, in every case. All right, so then I headed off to site number four, uh, which is uh, very, very close to where Jay Tolan did his uh, sixth station, so the end of his experiment. Uh, and this is actually Cummings Mountain uh, over here. It peaks up behind uh, two other mountains over there. All right, so the uh, observations from site number four. Uh, again, I won't go through the, the maths. Uh, here are the predictions on both models. And here are the measurements, and here are the actual photos uh, taken through the, the eyepiece of the theodolite uh, and photos of the uh, LCD uh, screen. So again, uh, the measurements incredibly close uh, to the globe with the 7 over 6R standard refraction uh, prediction. Site number five and the last site. Uh, this was quite a drive actually. Um, and I was quite a long way from the control tower, about 24 kilometers, I think. So it was quite difficult to see through the, uh, the theodolite. So I actually used Cummings Mountain as a reference point uh, and then swung my theodolite around to where the uh, control tower should be in order to find it. So I thought that was interesting as well. All right, so there's the control tower there, uh, which I would struggle to see uh, if I didn't have help uh, knowing where it was. All right, so here again, here are the uh, predictions on both models, the GLOW prediction and the FLAT prediction, uh, and the measurements. And obviously, once again, they are incredibly close to the GLOW predictions. All right, so just to drive the point home, uh, I've actually graphed the uh, three different prediction models uh, in Excel. Uh, so this uh, is the, the FLAT Earth prediction for varying distances for Saddleback Butte South. Uh, the blue, blue line is for the globe without refraction uh, and the orange line is for the globe with standard refraction, 7 over 6R. And the red crosses uh, my actual observations. Uh, so it's pretty clear to see uh, which model those observations fit and they fit it incredibly well, uh, obviously for Saddleback Butte North as well, given its proximity. Uh, for Cummings Mountain, I've done the same. Uh, so again, this is the flat earth prediction. Uh, the blue line is the uh, geometric prediction, so no refraction. Uh, and the orange line is the globe model with standard refraction. And again, uh, the red crosses are my observations. But what about Quartzite Mountain, uh, given that was Jay Toland's original target? Uh, I did actually get a chance to get a close-up of it 
uh, while I was driving to Vegas. So there it is. Uh, but I also got a longer shot. Let's have a look here. That is Mount Quartzite there. Very difficult to see. Uh, but we have 89.56.0. 62510. All right, so a question for all the flurfers. Can you figure out which site that I recorded this footage from out of the five given? Can you work out the predicted angle on a flat earth? Can you work out the predicted angle on a globe with standard refraction? Uh, and tell me what my actual measurement was and which model it supports. If you can do that, you'll get a massive shout out on my next video.